Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, good morning, let me say that. Good evening, whatever time of day you might uh, pop in and uh, see this broadcast. Just wanted to come on for a few minutes. I'm going to try to do a little more uh, than I've been doing before. So I can't guarantee I'll be on here every day, but as the Lord allows, hey, Latoria, I will come on and share with you what the Holy Ghost gives me. So if he don't give me anything to share with you, then I won't be on. I'll just come on for nothing. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, Pastor. But I come on to share with you what the Spirit of the Lord has impressed in my spirit. Um, just really enjoying uh, the presence of God. You know, sometimes we have to push away. Yeah, hello, Barbara. Uh, so that we can hear the Lord clearly. And so much times we just distracted, distracted by so many things. God bless you, Brother DeConte. Uh, appreciate your ministry. And we need to refocus, you know, and that's what I really want to encourage us to do is let's really refocus, get our attention back on the Lord as it should be. Uh, we cannot continue to allow life to be a distraction, work, children, family, everything has a place, but we must know that God has already prepared provision for his people. His name is Jehovah Jireh. This is one of the characteristics of who he is. He will provide. Huh? He, it's his already done provision has already been made. We just have to receive that. We have to believe that. And we have to uh, uh, um, really grab a hold to this in the spirit. But that's not what I wanted to talk about today. I uh, just wanted to wait a few minutes as people came on. Uh, just, hey, Courtney, uh, Gail, I just really wanted to talk about something that really struck me yesterday. Uh, my husband and I, uh, we looked at the car yesterday and we said, man, this car is dirty. It needs to be washed. So we went to the car wash. And as we went to the car wash, you know, we uh, paid our money and we gave the man, you know, we told him what we wanted. We gave the man the money to take care of the car and he brought us the receipt. And then when he gave us the receipt, he gave us a damp cloth. And I looked at my husband and I said, why is he giving us that? And my husband said, let me ask him. So he asked the man and he said, it's so you can clean the inside. <laughs> and let me just let me just share this with you. So many times we focus on cleaning the outside. Huh? What we look like, we focus on the external. I want to look, you see I got dressed up today? We focus on what's on the outside. How we appear to look. How our hair is, our nails. You know, women, we all into that makeup and you know men you into your suit is the suit good the shoes matching you know do the socks come with that do the tie go good we focus on the external huh but we don't put as much attention and time into the internal huh the man gave us a damn cloth and said clean the inside huh and the Holy Ghost said this is what we need to do huh we need to focus on the inside huh the car we went through and it automatically cleaned the outside but we had to put some work into cleaning on the inside. Huh? Saints, there's a work to be done on the inside. Huh? It's going to take some fasting. Huh? It's going to take some prayer. Huh? It's going to take some turning off the TV, turning over your cell phone, huh? getting in the word of God, hearing the Holy Spirit, huh? consecration, dedication. Huh? It's going to take all of that so that we can become the church of Jesus Christ, the body that that he's coming for without spot or wrinkle. Are we going to be perfect? No, but we're striving for, for perfection. Let's stop being fake and be real. So many of us are hurting and broken on the inside, but we don't want to take the time. And I put that post up there from a Jeremiah 8, and I believe it's 22. It says, is there not a bomb in Gilead? Is there not a physician? And let's look at this just for a quick second. 
second. This word balm is means a healing, a medicine. Is there and the uh, uh, Jeremiah was asking, isn't there any medication, any medication that uh, someone can get so they can be whole? And then this word Gilead means it means a rocky place. And see, the medication need to come into the rocky places of our heart. The the balm, uh, the soothing medication need to leak into every area of our heart and bring healing and deliverance to us. And that bomb is Jesus Christ. There is no other healer, no other deliverer, no other one that can set us free, uh, no other one that can break the yokes of bondage uh, off of our life but Jesus. Uh, if he did it for me, he will do it for you. He's no respecter of person. But here's what we have to do. He asked the question because the daughters of, of, of were the daughters of Zion were not whole. They had not been healed. And saints, too many of us are not whole. We've been in the church in the building for a long time, and we're yet struggling with the same sin, the same sickness, the same hurt, the same Mama Saya Nama Shundo, the same wounds. And Jesus said he came to set the captive free, to set at liberty those that are bruised. He came to bind up the brokenhearted, but we're not spending enough time with him. We're moving too fast, too quick, want to get a ministry, too fast, want to get a name, too fast, want to get busy doing things, and we're not sitting at the feet of Jesus. Mary did a good thing. Martha got busy doing a lot of things, but Jesus said, it's not going to be taken from her to sit at my feet, and it's not going to be taken from any of us. If we would desire to sit at the sit at the feet of Jesus, he will come and impart wisdom to us, healing to us, deliverance to us, help to us, security, safety to us. He'll heal our wounds. He'll be the medicine that seeks into, seeps into every mountainous place in our heart, and he will make us whole today. Beloved, why don't we get at the feet of Jesus so he can, hey, holy God, thank you, make us whole. That's my cry. It's my cry for the body of Christ. It's my cry for the living church of God, that we would take the time to sit at the feet of Jesus and be made whole. Too many preachers and teachers, evangelists, uh, apostles, and prophets have not taken the time to sit at the feet of Jesus and be made whole. We're imparting and we're proclaiming words, and these words are contaminated with our hurt, with our anger, with our disappointment, and saints, we need to get back. We need to get back to the altar. We need to get back to prayer. We need to get back to fasting. Get back to who we were in the book of Acts. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will empower us if we will take the time to allow him to heal us, to mend us, and to set us free. He's still breaking yokes, y'all. He's still able to deliver. Do you have a habit that you need God to break? He'll break it. Even eating. I have to continually put this thing before God because I, I'm an emotional eater. I'm going to just be candid. Can I be real? Because too many of us are being fake and people are not getting made whole. We all struggle with something. And so when my emotions are in control, I will eat. But I have to learn to submit those emotions to the spirit of the Lord so he can soothe me and comfort me. He is our comforter. He will do the work if we will come to him. This is all he wants, beloved. He wants to make us whole. Jesus said, it's the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. The kingdom is just not material things, beloved, but it's a relationship, covenant relationship, sonship, daughtership. We're looking for affirmation. We're looking to be who God has called us to be. We're looking for identity and purpose. It's all in Christ. It's all in the kingdom. It's all in that relationship with him, huh? but we must come to him. The father is seeking worshipers who will do it in spirit 
and in truth. This is important, beloved. We must be honest with God. Uh, you can fake me out, and we can fake out Facebook and social media, but we all got to look to God in truth. Uh, he knows where we are. He knows when we faking. He knows when we lying. He knows when we're hurting. He knows when we're broken. He knows when we're doubting. He knows when we're in fear. He knows everything. We don't have to run away from him, but we can run to him. He will empower us. He will give us purpose, identity, and destiny. He is the God that loves us and will heal every hurt that we have. I love y'all today with the love of Jesus. I just wanted to come on and share that with you. Why don't just wash the outside, huh? Peter said, don't just wash my head, but wash me, all of me. But Jesus said, the word is what washes us. Now are you clean through the word I have spoken to you. The word washes us. The word wash me with the water of your word. It is the word of God that will wash us. Us. And not only wash us, but it'll change us. Because the word is alive, beloved. It's living. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It divides soul and spirit and bone and marrow. And it can find us wherever we are. Huh? So God has a word for you and it's in your Bible. Huh? I'm not chasing any prophets. I'm not chasing any person. I'm chasing the person of Jesus, but no man on this earth. Huh? Because he has a sure word for me. Huh? Wait on the Lord. Huh? Be of good courage. And he will, uh, he will enlighten your heart. He will heal your heart. He will heal your hurt. Be encouraged, beloved. God loves us. He cares for us. He will do great things in us and through us. We just have to come to him. And